and about what to do about thousands of illegal children flooding into our country. But my next guest says there's no question the reality on the ground is much different than what's being portrayed in the media. Dennis Michael Lynch is a documentary film producer who's made two films on illegal immigration and national security called They Come to America. Dennis, good to see you today. Good to see you, Shannon. Thank you for covering the story. Well, listen, it hasn't been especially easy for the media to do this in traditional ways. Um, getting to some of what's really happening there uh, has been tough, and there have been prohibitions on seeing and speaking to people and learning this. You've been there and done it yourself, so I want to start by playing a little bit of what you found when you talked to border agents about health screenings of the thousands of people coming into the U.S. across the border. There is no health screening. There's no health screening. The health screening, the closest thing you're going to get to a health screening is fingerprinting. There are reports right now that the, that the kids being put into these detention centers uh, or these holding centers, um, that they are getting uh, immunization checks. Do you have any idea if that's true or not? I have not seen one child sent or had any sort of um, medical, medical staff come and check the children I've seen numerous families come in and go out, and nobody has touched them in any way, shape, or form. And Dennis, I know that you talk to people, I do, almost everyone is heartbroken over seeing these kids and the conditions that they're in. But these health concerns are very real, uh, and the impact, impact they could have here in the U.S. You've seen documentation that goes a step further as well. Tell us what you know. Yeah, I, I've received documents that I'm not supposed to receive. Let's just put it at that, and I've shared some of them with you. It shows just half a day of sort of the, uh, the process that goes through these detention centers and what sort of diseases they're finding. Swine flu, bacterial pneumonia, chicken pox. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And Shannon, what concerns me most is not so much the children right now in these detention centers, because that only represents 15% of the overall population that has been apprehended at the border patrol, or at the border. The real concern is the 85% of people. They call them families. That consists of just one person and at least a kid. They've just been released into the general public. And with school starting in the next month, we've got ourselves a real problem, Shannon, because these people are carrying those same diseases, and yet nobody has checked them for it, and yet nobody has even started to address those in terms of curing it, in terms of putting them to hospitals. And now these children are all going to start to go to school in the beginning of September. And what does that say? Well, I have to ask you, because, you know, anyone who's put a child into school knows that uh, they're real sticklers about immunization records and we need to see all the documentation or they can't come to the first day of class. Are you saying that you think that may not happen with these children? Well, the problem is this, Shannon. What I was told from principals, and I'll even personalize it, that my own principal at our grammar school, I just met with her the other day and asked her if she was ready for this surge of children. We've gone from 40 new students two years ago to 70 new students, she thinks it's going to be into the hundreds. When I say new students, these are students that come in who can't speak English. They don't register like your child or my child would a month in advance or two months in advance. They register, they look to register on the day. So these kids are going to come in on the first day of school and the one single nurse and a couple of faculty members are going to try to deal with hundreds of students who are coming in on day one. Meanwhile, they're supposed to be addressing our students. And it's a, it's a huge concern. And, you know, everybody talks about the humanitarian crisis and we've got to deal with these children. We've got to deal with the, with the families. My contention is we need to put that much effort into our own children first. The president wants $4 billion to take care of these children. What about $4 billion to take care of America's children? Because I can take you through Chicago. I could take you through Detroit, Washington, D.C. I could take you anywhere in the country and you will see hungry children. But nobody's addressing that. Nobody is addressing that at all. And until America has every American child living the American dream, I don't know why we're focusing all of our energy on these children who came here illegally and their families. Because, again, I want to repeat it. Everybody's focusing on the 15 percent of the, 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 the population, which is those children. The other 85 percent are being released into the general public. And, and our understanding is that, um, you know, by one calculation, one study, 90 percent of them will not show up for the court hearings that they'll have in which they would be processed and sent home. So we know there's still 
much left to be done fighting here in Washington over how to address this crisis and beyond. In the meantime, we know you keep an eye on it. Um, we'll post some more of your information online so people can check it out for themselves and make their own decisions about exactly what is happening. Dennis Michael Lynch, if, thank if, you. If people... If people could go to theycometoamerica.com, they'll see the actual report, and I hope they'll, sh they'll spread it around. People need to see it. Theycometoamerica.com. Right. Come yeah, it's not easy to find Thank out you. exactly what's going on there. So uh, more sunlight is always good for all issues. Thank you.